talking about dilations and what they are, which is dilation is the last type of transformation we're going to be talking about, um, which this first Prezi video, we did all this stuff in class, so you really don't have to watch this unless you are either trying to get ahead or if you've been absent. So all this stuff I'm going through right now, we will be doing together in class. So just to let you know. But anyway, so in class, we brainstormed some ways and some places where you've seen dilations in our world. Okay, so dilations is a transformation where it does not change shape, but it does change size. So let's see here, where have you seen or heard about dilations in our world, let's think. Hmm, holy hot dog. Those are great examples, you guys. I'm going to show you some of the ones that I came up with, but they're probably not as clever as yours. So, um, But anyway, some examples could be like a rubber band. So a rubber band, you can stretch it out. Um, it's kind of changing its size. Uh, a puffer fish, it kind of like blows up real big when it gets scared or it's trying to defend itself. So that's kind of like a dilation. So it's staying the same shape, but the size is changing. Another example of a dilation are when your pupils dilate, which you can either have them dilate on their own, like little puss in boots right here, um, whenever he's trying to be sad or cute, he makes his pupils get really big. Um, so your eyes actually naturally, the pupils in your eyes actually naturally uh, dilate, so they either get bigger or smaller. Um, but also, if you go to the eye doctor, sometimes they make your pupils get real big so they can look in your eye a little bit easier. So, pupils undergo dilations. Um, if you've taken biology, um, a cell will go through something called osmosis when it's either expanding or getting smaller due to water either leaving the cell or entering the cell. So, that's kind of a different example um, of a dilation. Another example is if you're on your computer and you change the size of your graphic, that could be a dilation. Um, if you're enlarging or shrinking the size of a picture, so you could do this artistically. So a lot of times if you're trying to trace a picture that you already have a picture of, you're either making it much bigger like in the one that I have here, or you're making it smaller. So that's another example of a dilation. Also, sometimes when animals more so than humans kind of grow up, they kind of look the same. They just get bigger, like this cute little giraffe and its mama, or I don't know if it's its mom or dad, or maybe it's not even related to the giraffe. But anyways, the adult giraffe kind of looks like the little baby giraffe. So, um, another example of a dilation could be a camera. When your when your phone or when you're using a camera, when you take a picture. Okay, it takes the picture and makes it smaller normally, or you could zoom in and enlarge the picture. Um, and lastly, in science, when you use a microscope, um, you're making the images you're looking at real big, so you can see small things like cells and things like that. Um, some other examples, um, your shadow could be kind of like an example. It's changing the size of you. Uh, a balloon kind of dilates, it gets bigger. Or if you pop the balloon, it gets smaller. So that could also be an example of a dilation. Um, so um, previously, we discussed um, three types of rigid motion. So remember, a rigid motion is when a shape does not change shape or size. So when it moves around, whenever it undergoes some sort of transformation, the size and shape will remain the same. So it does not change. Which one example of this is a rotation, another example is a reflection, and a final example is a translation. Now, in this section, we're going to be talking about a dilation, which actually is not a rigid motion. Because, like we were talking about in our examples, rigid motions will change the shape, I'm sorry, the size of an object. So it's no longer rigid. Because rigid's got to stay the same shape and same size, so watch yourself. Okay, so a dilation is a non-rigid transformation that enlarges or reduces a figure, so it changes the size, but, oh, well, I got excited, sorry guys, but, I was trying to emphasize something, but the shape stays the same. So the size will change in a dilation, but the shape does not change, so be careful. So this is a non-rigid transformation. Transformation. Okay, it changes size, but not shape. 
So it's non-rigid transformation. Um, and the dilation is described by a scale factor in a center of dilation. So we'll talk about what those things are in a little bit. So like in here, our scale factor will tell us how much larger or smaller the pre-image goes to get to its image. So how much larger or smaller the image is than the pre-image is basically what the scale factor tells us. The center of dilation. If you draw lines that connect all the points of the image and pre-image, so matching points, so like these two coordinates, so we drew the line through that one, these two coordinates, so the line is drawn through that one, etc. So if you draw little lines or rays through the pre-image and corresponding image point, all three of these rays will intersect at the same point called the center of dilation, which is pretty cool. Okay, so in class, we just want to figure out, are these shapes undergoing a dilation or are they not? So remember, same shape, so the proportions, the ratios of the figure are all the same. It's just the size is changing, so be careful. So like in the first one, what do we think? Are those two shapes going through a dilation? Hmm, holy hot dog, yes they are because it stays the same shape, just the, only the size changes, so watch yourself. Guys, so these examples we are doing together in class, um, basically the whole front paper um, that you are supposed to get for your in-class examples for dilations, that is what we're doing in class. The back of the paper, you'll be watching the videos on your own. So these still, uh, you don't really have to do them unless you're absent or you're trying to get ahead because we are doing them in class with your favorite person, so get excited. Now these next shapes, are these going through a dilation? Hmm. No, they're not, which is so sad because we like things to go through dilations. It's sad when they don't. Okay, so this one, the size does change, but the shape also changes. Like this little part right here got a lot longer on the new shape. So these are not dilations because the shape changed. Um, the size can change, that's allowed, but the shape is not allowed to change. So since our shape changed, it is no longer a dilation. So no. Now what do you think about three? Are these going through a dilation? Hmm. No, it's another no, which is sad. Again, the shape has changed. This triangle is a lot wider than that one proportionally. Um, the size did change, but the shape also changed, which is a big no-no for dilation. So watch yourself. And lastly, do we think four, do we think this one, these two shapes represent a dilation? Hmm. Yay! Yes, they do. You guys are awesome. Okay, again, same shape. All my ratios and proportions of my size look the same. The only thing that has changed is the size of the shape. So the shape's the same, but the size is different, which is a dilation. So nice job. Okay, the next part of the worksheet, example two, um, I'm going to be going over how we construct a dilation, which again, we're doing this in class, so you don't have to do it now. Um, so again, I'm going to show you how to construct a dilation formally. Um, we're going to learn some shortcuts so you don't have to go through this whole process every single time. Um, but before we do example two, I got to give you some background. So let's go over the background. So again, the center of dilation is the point where the lines connecting the points of the image and the pre-image intersect. So we connect all the points that correspond to each other in the image and pre-image, and bam, they all intersect in the center of dilation. So that is where your center of dilation is. Um, and we're also going to be finding something called the scale factor, which this is the ratio of the length of any side in the image to the length of its corresponding side in the pre-image. So it describes how much the figure is enlarged or reduced. So we denote the scale factor. When we solve for scale factor, we use this little k, and it's always going to be the length of an image side over the corresponding length of a pre-image side. So it's always image over pre-image, image over pre-image. So for example, let's say that B, triangle B, is our image in triangle A, is the pre-image. So you don't have to write this down, but I'm just kind of going through it. So we know that triangle B is much larger than A. It's actually one and a half times larger. And the way I figured that out is by calculating our scale factor. So I'm going to take one side length on my image triangle and divide it by its corresponding side, or the side that relates to that one in my smaller triangle. 
So for example, the smallest side is 9 in my big triangle, and I'm going to divide it by my smallest side in the smaller triangle, which is 6. So 9 over 6 would be my first ratio when I'm trying to calculate the scale factor. Or I could pick the next largest. So I could pick 12, which is kind of the middle length of the side that's not the longest but not the shortest. And the middle length on my smaller triangle is the 8. So I could do 12 over 8. Or I could compare the two longer sides, so 15 and 10. Which if you reduce down all three of these fractions, guess what? They all reduce down to three halves. Whoa, which three halves is one and a half, which is our scale factor. So that tells me triangle B is one and a half times the size of triangle A. So that will be how we're calculating our scale factor. Or let's switch it around. Switch it around. Um, so let's say that triangle A is our image and triangle B is our pre-image. So if you guys see A is a lot smaller than B. Okay, so in this one, our scale factor is actually two-thirds. So triangle A is two-thirds the size of triangle B. And again, when you calculate your scale factor, you divide the image length over the pre sorry, image length over pre-image. So I could divide the two smaller sides again, the two medium sides, or two longer sides. And again, image over pre-image. And if you reduce all three of these fractions down, guess what? You get two-thirds, which is my scale factor. And again, so it tells me that triangle A is two-thirds the size of triangle B. So that is what we'll be using to calculate your scale factor. Okay, so who's ready to construct your very first dilation? Yes! Let's go. So this is kind of going to be what it will look like when we're constructing our dilation. We'll have a center of dilation where all three of our pre-image and image lines, when they intersect those points, will come together in one point. Okay, and we'll be drawing our triangles, which will land on these three lines, which is exciting. Okay, so look down at example two. I'm going to walk you step by step through what you're supposed to do. So right now we're working in that little coordinate grid part of your paper. Um, an example two. So there's like a big open space with a coordinate grid. Um, I can actually show you what that looks like. Let me get that out real quickly. So we're on this paper right here. We're on example two. We already did example one at the top. So I'm going to be walking you through this part right now. And then we'll be answering these three questions. Or these, yes, these three questions after we complete our pre-image and image triangles after it undergoes the scale factor. So it says, draw a dilation of triangle ABC, which I gave you the points, with a scale factor of 3 and the center at the origin. Okay, so the first thing you guys are going to be plotting points A, B, and C on this picture. So go ahead and do that. You can pause the video and plot those points. So like in mine, all I did was I plotted points a, B, and C on my coordinate grid, just like so. So plot your points and draw your triangle. Okay, so now after you've drawn your pre-image triangle, what we're going to do is we're going to draw rays that go from the origin, which is our center of dilation. So I'm going to draw a ray, which is kind of like an arrow. It has a start point and then goes for forever in one direction. So I'm going to draw three rays that go from the origin and intersect each of these three points in my pre-image like so. Okay, so go ahead and draw these three rays on your paper at this time. And pause the video when you get done. Start it up again. Alright, so now what we're going to do, which I could read this to you or I could kind of just explain. So what you're going to do, you're going to measure with the ruler the length from the origin to each of these points. So like I personally would use centimeters because it's a little easier to work in centimeters than inches sometimes. So like if I measured from the origin to point A, let's say that it was three centimeters. I don't know. Okay. Now if we want this thing to undergo a dilation of three, I need to find where the point will land after the triangle is three times as large. Okay, so what you're going to do is like from here to here, from our origin to point A was 3 centimeters. If I want that point to undergo a dilation of 3, I'm going to multiply this distance by 3. So if it was 3 centimeters, I do 3 times 3, which is 9. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure from the origin all the way out to 9 centimeters and plot my point at 9 centimeters. And guess what? That will be where the image point will land. 
So like I measured, like from here to here is three centimeters, so three times that length will land here. Same thing with point B. I'm going to measure from the origin to B, and I'm going to triple it since my scale factor is three, so I'm going to triple the length. So here's the length once, here's it twice, here's it three times, and bam, my point B would land there. Same thing with C. I'm going to measure from the origin to C, a, and multiply it by 3 and measure out that distance to figure out where my C point will land. So there you go. And after you have points A prime, B prime, C prime, so these are the points for the image triangle, then I'm going to connect my points. So like so. Okay, so that is going to be where the image triangle will land after it has undergone a dilation with a scale factor of 3. Okay, so if you need help doing this, please make sure you ask for help because if you don't know this, then the rest of this thing's not going to be going to make any sense. Like when we do this part right here, or let's see, this right here, if you don't get this part right, whoa, sorry guys, let me zoom out, not in, out. Okay, this part, if this is wrong, then these four questions or three questions actually will also be wrong. So make sure you get help on this if you don't know what to do. Okay, so now I'm going to be answering these three questions right here on the PowerPoint. So follow along on the PowerPoint. Okay, let's keep going. So we're on which step? We're right here. No, we're right here. Okay. Okay, so the next question on your sheet says, what are the lengths of AB? So I want to measure the length from A to B, which what I did was I just counted the spaces on my coordinate grid. You could measure it with a ruler. I just said from here to here, though, was this many spaces. So it says in question two, what are the lengths of AB and A prime, B prime, so this length? And then we're going to do the same thing with BC and B prime, C prime. So I'm going to measure these two horizontal distances and these two vertical distance, and then it says, what is the scale factor? So again, when we do this, we're going to divide the length of the image over pre-image. Okay, so when I counted the spaces, A to B was four spaces, A prime to B prime was 12 spaces, B to C was three spaces, and B prime to C prime was nine spaces. Okay, so again, I counted spaces. If you decide to measure it with a ruler, then yours will be different. So remember, to find the scale factor, we're going to divide the image lengths by their corresponding pre-image lengths. Okay, so like the first one, I could say my image length is 12, A prime, B prime, and its corresponding pre-image length, which A prime, B prime directly relates to AB, is 4. So I would do 12 over 4, which, guess what, you guys, it's 3, which makes sense because at the start it said it has a scale factor of 3. Or I could divide B prime C prime, which is 9, over B C, which is 3. <gasps> and guess what? It's also 3. So we're good to go. We calculated right. Yay! Party, party. Okay. So now the next question says write the coordinates, question 3. Write the coordinates of the image and the pre-image below. Okay, so for my pre-image, we already knew them. They're the points 3, 6, 7, 6, and 7, 3. Now the image, if you measured it perfectly, which we are humans, we do make mistakes. Okay, so if you measured it perfectly, this would be what you get for the points in the image. Okay, so if you didn't get these, it's not the end of the world. You probably got something really close to these. So I wanted you guys to figure out question four. It says, how do the coordinates of the image relate to the coordinates of the pre-image? What do you have to do to the points in the pre-image to get the points in the image? So basically now we're looking for a shortcut to see how we can get from our pre-image points to our image points without having to construct these triangles and draw the lines because that kind of takes a long time and we don't got time for that. So um, do you guys see a pattern for how we're going from the pre-image points to the image points? Do you see it? It is to multiply by the scale factor, which is 3. So if I take all my x's and all my y's and multiply by 3, which is my scale factor, then guess what? We will get the image points. Isn't that cool, you guys? Pretty awesome. Awesome sauce, right? Okay, so the pattern, our algebraic rule when we calculate a dilation, we're going to multiply our points 
by the scale factor. So this is like distributed into the point. So we're going to multiply all the x's by the scale factor and all the y's by the scale factor. So for this specific problem, we're going to be multiplying all the x's and all the y's by 3. So this is technically how you write the algebraic rule. Our xy will go to 3 times xy. But again, that's the same as like distributing the 3 to the x and the y. So 3x, 3y. Okay, now um, the next items we're going to be talking about is what the scale factor means and how we'll know if it's an enlargement or a reduction. The rest of the sheet you will have to watch videos on how to do that and we're not doing it as a class. So this one, you need to stop this video now and pick up on example three. Nice job, you guys. Great.